This is an unboxing of a mysterious package that I have received. I can guess what it is, but I don't want to guess. I want to see what it is. So, this is a knife and this is a package. I use both hands to crack open this sellotape. Okay, this is the moment of truth. Let's see what is inside this mysterious package. Is it a bike? It's from eBay, so I order a bike. Let's see. Oh. Oh, a telescope. A Gilbert astronomy teles astronomical telescope. With 26 inches steel tripod and heavy die cast base. That's the telescope I ordered because I had it when I was a kid. It was the size of this guy's and had a telescope like this. Oh, amazing. I ordered it from America. The postage cost more than the telescope itself. Now let's open it. Okay, this is the Gilbert telescope. This is the handle of it. And I can see that there is a lead on top of it all through. This is not actually a pla uh, cardboard. It's cardboard, but there's a layer, very waxy, plasticky layer on top of it. So it's kind of waterproof. Let me open it and see how it is. Okay, let me remove the lead. Oh, look at this telescope. Has all the things inside it. This is immaculate, it's new. It has not been used. The one that I had when I was a kid, this part of it was missing. And the eyepiece of it is, was rubbish anyway. I used the Japanese eyepiece, uh, Hogan style, which w itself is rubbish now, but by then that was the best thing I had. And uh, oh, okay, this is a, a ring for the mount. And this is the base for the mount. Lovely. Oh, mine didn't have these writings on it. No first and other things, but anyway, that's good. This is the swivel base on that, so the ring goes on this, and just we can turn it. Very handy, very easy to work with. And uh, oh, I, mine also didn't have this part. I'll show you this. This is a beauty. This is something that you project the image of the sun by putting it over the eyepiece like that. And you could see the image of the sun without actually endangering yourself. Very good, very efficient. And I'm really delighted. This actually had a rack pinion. <laughs> uh, the one I had didn't have this. So it must be a later model than that. And uh, it was lovely. I love this. Oh. It's so sweet. Everything in it is perfect. I think this one is a either is a completely pristine and vintage kept clean and nice or must be a replica. I don't know who may build the replica of such an old telescope. Yes, now I'm opening it and let me see. Oh mine was superior to this. You know why? The one I had when I was a kid, in front of here, had a glass. And on the back also had a circular glass. So this uh, a circle here was holding that glass in place. Anyway, let's look at the mirror. Oh, that's it. That's the mirror. Really good. And this is a secondary mirror. Yeah. Now I think this is a later build. The one I had was actually, the quality was better than this. The front, the mirror, even the secondary mirror was better. But the thing is that this telescope is a real telescope. You can see it has even a mirror cell. And I was able to collimate it with this. It didn't need much collimation every time, but anyway, when I when you need it, you could easily do it with this three uh, screws there. And that made it really a real telescope. It is a real telescope. It's not a toy, I must say that. I modified the front of it with this. I could actually put a reduction uh, um, uh, aperture here 
which reduce the glare when you were looking at the moon or a planet, and it has, you could see the best views of the craters of the moon I've ever seen. All those wrinkles in the uh, uh, Mare Imbrium, you could see with this. As the shadow moved, you could see all those basalt waves uh, beside the Pico, Mon Pico. And that was amazing. And I could see the bands of the Jupiter. I could see the North Equatorial Band and South Equatorial Band. And I could see actually once, I noticed that and later learned that what I have seen was real. I could see a disturbance in the North Equatorial Band or South Equatorial Anyway, I have to look in my notes. And that was real. With this scientific instrument, I was able to do that. So this is really a, is not a toy. It's a real scientific equipment. We did real science with this in a way, and I noticed that at, those t at that time that I found that uh, south equatorial disturbance in the belts of the uh, Jupiter, such a thing was observed also in America by others, but it was reported by that time. So, credit to me, and oh, there's a few bots and bobs and bibs here, with, uh, <laughs> bits and bobs. Okay, let me open those ones. And also have a look. None of this existed with me. I bought it second hand because I could not really get the, my hand on the first hand one. I bought it from a classmate. Okay, let us see what is it. Okay, this is explaining about the rack and pinion and the eyepiece of this telescope. Uh, as I told you, the eyepiece was not good quality, so I changed it for a simple Huygens one that I had from a very small, tiny, three centimeter size of the mirror uh, reflector tel Newtonian telescope. Three centimeter. Imagine that. A little bit, just more than one inch. Japanese telescope. It had a good eyepiece, Huygens, of course, and that was really nice. Yeah, oh, I'm delighted. This this has a lot of nice things in this package. I mean, if you were a kid, you really want to start your astronomy with this. Ooh, a map of the moon, a star map. Oh, what a nice thing it was for a kid of my age, by the. Ah, oh, December, you can see all the constellations for all the sky. So, if you put that side in front of you, the top part, June, means the sea, the constellations you will see are these ones. So, if you put now, January, we are in January, okay? If I put the January on the top, the constellations are C are here. You see Orion, Canis Major, Sirius, you know, Columba, uh, Taurus, Plates, and uh, Gemini, and Auriga and Perseus and Unicorn, all those constellations are here. The brightest star in the sky is Sirius, of course, you know that. I mean, in outer sky, not in space. Very lovely gift was this, oh, okay. for a kid. Um, Adventures in the Sky with the Gilbert Telescope. Oh, love this. Gilbert had a lot of, uh, oh, that's a little booklet. Everything you want to know about the constellations and the stars. Is here. I could see the yeah, rings of the Saturn with this. I could see a very small, tiny disk of the uh, Mars. Not very discernible, but anyway, it was there. Oh, how to observe the sun with this. Oh, amazing. I was lucky I saw once with a welding glass. I saw the biggest, one of the, probably one of the biggest sunspots on the moon. And their son. Yeah. Lovely booklet. Oh, so many memories. I just got it because of the nostalgia effect. Oh, Mount Palomar, the most powerful, and the Lick. Uh, Lick. Or the Yerkes uh, Observatory. Yeah, the telescope in the Yerkes Observatory. Anyway, amazing things. Oh, good old days. That the science of astronomy was very simpler. <laughs> <laughs> but even by then they're trying to sell you some bells and whistles but that's what you need the real scientific instrument to start from here and also I can say that the two legs are here actually very good legs are they three? I have to check they don't look three to me let me see I can say this is also a later model. The legs I see here are quite tinier than what I had. The ones I had, 
they looked more sturdy. They didn't have sharp edges like this. But and they could easily also fit in the mount, which was the mountain disc, which was somewhere here or here. Anyway, they may have improved it actually. Mine was simple and easy to put. Anyway, nice. And I have all the things that I need to work with this telescope.